pleasure to introduce my friend, Professor Ahmed al uh, Dr. Ahmed is a well-known figure in Alexandria University, a professor of nephrology and internal medicine, and he's going to talk about uh, chronic kidney disease of unknown cause, a global epidemics. Please, Dr. Ahmed. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, thanks, Dr. Maggi and all uh, University staff for the kind invitation and the great meeting. Uh, hopefully, to add some value of this uh, epidemiologic uh, topic. It's not a pure science, but we need to have an input about this issue. So, Israeli CTD U is an epidemic. So, let's go first to look what CTD epidemic. Is really CTD an epidemic? This is a very alarming paper just published a few days back. Now, we have almost 1 billion person worldwide with some sort of kidney affection. 850 million person worldwide having kidney disease. That's double the number of patients with diabetes and 20 times the number of patients with HIV infection worldwide. It's real alarming and it's real a, a, a great challenge to us as a nephrologist to work upon. We're just dealing with the very minute tip of the iceberg. And most of these patients are actually CKD. <coughs> much, much, much less are AKI and those on renal replacement therapy, whether diagnosis or transplantation. So, most of our patients, 840 million persons worldwide, are walking with CKD with all the backdrops of this issue. And look at the impact on global mortality. There's almost, again, 1 million deaths directly related to CTD in 2013 and one in every 57 person uh, having death due to CKD around the world and it is, look here, it's very much growing in incidence whereas cardiovascular illness and new plasmas are declining in incidence as a leading cause of mortality we are increasing as a cause of mortality as a CKD per person and it's directly related to cardiovascular death, as we all know. So, is that worldwide? It's also in Africa. And here is the burden of chronic kidney disease on the African continent. Like 15.8% uh, out of the global community having some stage of CKD. And those with late stages are almost 5% again. And, again, this percentage even increase when you put the risk factor like hypertension, diabetes, and HIV on. How about our region, North Africa? This is a seminal paper published by Professor Barsoom a few years back, and here the incidence of, uh, or the, and the prevalence of CKD in Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco, and you can see that we have like 650 person with CKD per million and new almost 200 person per million new to CKD in our country and some similar numbers all around. So what is the exception? Whether global, regional or local for this epidemic? These are the far known etiologists Diabetes still sit on the top, and hypertension comes next, glomerular disorders, and many others. But look here, please. Only 4% in the United States are unknown etiology for CKD. Here, in a more wider uh, distribution in the world, 18.4 constitute others. And these others include 
uh, many other disorders like tumors, like uh, obstructive neuropathy, and of course some big number for the unknown etiology as well. And again, this is the situation in North African country, Egypt, Morocco, and Tunisia. G and here, six for like 10% in Egypt. Diabetes is much less than hypertension, and this is a point a long-standing discussion and we've for many years back said whether this is misunderstanding of hypertensive nephrosclerosis, false uh, diagnosis because of the co-occurrence of hypertension along with CKD or whether this is the cause or the consequence of CKD actually, but definitely we still have a big proportion, like 20% unknown etiology, whereas in Morocco, it's up to 50%. So it's an alarming figure. It's not like the worldwide figure. It's not like 4%. And this put a heavy shadow on our registries. Again, this is the latest registry from the Egyptian site of nephrology from some of the um, uh, nephrology units uh, in the and diastasis units in Egypt and you can still find that the unknown etiology comes to 16 or 18 percent and still hypertension considered number one and diabetes number two. And this is the seminal uh, work of the Ayn Shams University which was published uh, in the uh, last year uh, era editor and again it shows that almost in 6,000 cohort dialysis patients, almost half of them are unknown or others. And uh, of course, the number of hypertension here is not only the cause of, of uh, CKD, but also the comorbid finding, as exemplified by the next slide, and the comorbid findings in those CKD patients. So, this is CKD epidemic, and this is CKDU distributed worldwide, what's really CKDU? What's, what is CKD of undetermined etiology? Unfortunately, in the literature, when you dig for CKDU, you would find Mesoamerican nephropathy, heat stress nephropathy, global warming or agriculture nephropathy, as if there is no other cause for CKDU except these. And this is not to be applied in our locality. We, I think, in Egypt and other developing countries, the late presentation, negligence, the poor diagnostic utility can relatively uh, contribute to the bias of the terminology of CKDU. Many of our patients could have been diagnosed with a certain etiology if they have been picked up earlier. And this is not only in Egypt, this is a systematic review for the uncertain etiology and they concluded that the studies examining etiology of CKDU have reported many exposure to heterogeneous etiologies that vary by region. And to identify etiology you have to design consistent, comparative, multi-site studies, which is not the case. We are only having reports from specific localities around the world. And back, if you look back here, 4% unknown in the United States, and it's between 20 and 50% in North Africa. So definitely it's not the same story and not the same etiologies. We have to look more deep. And this could be part of the clue hypertensive nephrosclerosis and the unknown. Could they have been an undertaking biopsies for those patients with CKD who still refrain from doing biopsies for many patients who are, have an unexplained etiology for CKD because of, maybe of increased echogenicity of the kidney, maybe of interpretation of poor corticoidal differentiation, but still when you have a normal kidney size, I think biopsy should be taken, like the previous speaker said, in diabetes, in HCV, you have to have a low threshold for biopsy these patients. In Alexandria, we noticed that we moved up in the number of biopsies uh, only in one center from 142 biopsy in 2012 to 288 biopsy in 2014, and now we're almost 
a thousand biopsy per year for our patient. And I think the increasing the number of the biopsies doing, uh, done is just because we have a lower threshold to biopsy patient when they have an unknown etiology for CKD. I just wanted to put forward the point that CKD is not Mesoamerican nephropathy. But if we stick to the literature, we have to look for these terminologies. Mesoamerican nephropathy, agricultural nephropathy, heat stress nephropathy, and global warming nephropathy. This is a disease that primarily affects men. Working outdoors, major group affected is sugar cane workers, maybe other farmers as well. Recent studies suggest that it's driven by recurrent dehydration from the hot climate, exposure to the agrochemicals, and sugar containing rehydrating solutions. So these are three points that could contribute to the CKDU in the current terminology in the literature. And many studies have shown that it's more common in sugarcane areas at the lower altitude compared to those at higher altitude, which means that the temperature and the climate does differ in, occur in occurrence of this CKDU. Studies also show that heat indexes across these unsafe so zones like the Occupation Safety and Health Administration change in the heat profile uh, and the global warming over the years. And again, some mechanistic studies like the urine analysis and the uric acid levels have shown some input for the pathophysiology of these areas. There are hotspots in Mexico, North America, uh, Central America, I'm sorry, and in Egypt, in Minya, uh, especially in Minya, uh, Professor Osama, uh, I think he spoke about this earlier, and uh, India and Sri Lanka uh, having a very high prevalence in special areas uh, of these Mesoamerican or sugarcane nephropathy. The heat changes and the global warming over the last 20 years have been shown to affect the uh, uh, occurrence of these uh, Mesoamerican or heat stress nephropathy. And you can note that the dry zone and the arid zone having more level of this uh, contribution of CKD of CKDU rather than the uh, humid zones and the wet zones. And this is the temperature trend in Central America over the last 20 years showing again change in the pattern of temperature toward hot climate and uh, global warming. And this uh, goes to the uh, terminology of uh, I know <coughs> widows where you have a very alarming figure is one of every three men die from CKDU in this she 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 galba uh, in Nicaragua. It's like that. You, you imagine that, and, and this occurs at the age of 49. <laughs> at the age of 49, one of every three men dies because of CKD. So it's, it's something, and in the same country, but in another locality, the average age is 75 years. So there is much loss of the uh, life years and the productivity and as you see, I and the widows. Yes, can heat stress really do so on, on pathophysiological and mechanistic pathway? Definitely we know that when you have a heavy sweating, when you have exercise under uh, extreme temperature, you are subjected to rhabdomyolysis and hyperosmolarity <coughs> would lead to further injury, injury to the tubules, hyperthermia and vasopressin release and extracellular volume depletion with resultant pre-renal renal impairment and all will end into the common pathway which is the chronic interstitial fibrosis and hence progressing to end stage renal disease. And this has been shown in the biopsies of those patients. Look for the widespread tubular interstitial fibrosis and infiltration along with the glomerular sclerosis of unknown etiology 
predominantly interstitial pattern, of course, with glomerular because of the TGFB, as you know, and you would have at the end both interstitial fibrosis and glomerular sclerosis. And th this is a lipofuscin like uh, bodies and vacuoles in the cytoplasm of the bodocytes may be an effect of heat stress again. Again, the heat stress would cause the hyperosmolarity, the hyperthermia, and the volume depletion. And this has been studied by showing a considerable rise in the serum creatinine just between the morning and the afternoon, after a working shift in the field. Considerable rise in the serum creatinine and in the serum uric acid. Just in the same day before the shift and at the end of the day after the shift. And a BH falls during the shift increases the risk for uric acid crystallization in the tubules as well because of the acidity uh, in the urine. So is it all uh, Mesoamerican nephropathies? Is it all for the workers? in the agriculture field and the pesticide contamination, really it's not that much, uh, that all. You should look for your diet. Alarming <coughs> papers, and I'm going to end with these two papers, have been very recently published. One of them is ours, which is in the CJSIN, just showing that these are healthy food for your kidney and these are bad food for your kidney. Fruits and vegetables, whole grains, legumes, fish, low-fat dairy product and nuts, let's say Mediterranean diet style. Red meat, high sodium, processed meat and sugar-sweetened beverages or soft drinks, let's say American diet style. These are good for your kidney. They decrease the incidence of having CKD. They decrease by almost 30%, they decrease the incidence of albuminuria by almost 25% and the rate of decline on the GFR by another 30%. So be aware of what you eat. It's not only the kidney, and this is just a few days back in the JAMA, internal medicine, in 10 European countries just examining, and this goes with the Lancet, uh, campaign for soft drink banning almost half a million person included in the study 40% deaths occurred in these 10 European countries and the study found that consumption of total sugar sweetened and artificially sweetened soft drinks was positively associated with all cause deaths in these European countries. So food might affect the kidney and might affect your life years. And thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Professor Ahmed, for this uh, elegant presentation as usual. Uh, any questions?